In season 11, Jenny Goldfarb made a deal with Mark Cuban for her vegan version of deli meat, Unreal Deli. Mark Cuban, you got yourself a deal. Uh, let's see how she's doing now. I came onto the show with only $10,000 in revenues. In just over half a year, we reached over $300,000 in sales. Unreal Deli became a permanent fixture on the menu in 175 deli and restaurant locations. From Whole Foods Grab and Go, to Veggie Grill, to Mendocino Farm Sandwich Market. But when COVID-19 reached our shores, everything changed. A couple weeks before the whole nation shut down, my dad tested positive for COVID-19 and was taken to intensive care. He spent 28 days on a ventilator, and doctors told my family that we should start planning for the worst. When we had lost nearly all hope, my dad received a plasma donation, which started to turn things around, and two months later, he finally came home and began his slow road to recovery. A complete miracle. We were plummeting to zero. It was a disaster in the making there for a minute. Throughout my journey, Mark has offered unwavering support and guidance. Restaurants were hit hard, and our sales were flatlining. Mark was the one who realized we needed to pivot into retail. We went deep into research and development to create our second product, Unreal Turkey. And now we can proudly state 300 grocery stores out the gate with at least another 300 to come. Pivoting to retail saved the business and made this whole nightmare story into something really wonderful. When your back's against the wall, that's when the best entrepreneurs do their best work. So I'm really proud of you. Grandpa's going home. <laughs> What this has all meant for me is that we have to use each day we're here to make our mark, help save animals, help the earth, and help folks eat much better, healthier, delicious food. To really take advantage of these days, because we don't know if tomorrow will even come. In season 11, Sarah Pai GU and Syed Nakvi made a deal with Kevin O'Leary for their eco-friendly cleaning products company, Blue Land. We are launching in a big box national retailer at the beginning of next year. Done. Let's catch up with them now. Just one week after airing, Kevin brought us on QVC, and it was a total pinch me moment. That's the magic right there. We did $250,000 in sales. It was bananas. It's only been 12 months since Shark Tank, and we've already done over $15 million in sales. Blueland now has eliminated 1 billion cleaning bottles and 5 million pounds of carbon dioxide. The pandemic has changed the physical retail landscape, so we've decided to hold off on a retail launch and double down on our online sales. So much of your strategy when you came on Shark Tank was rolling it out to large big box retailers, and they just disappeared off the horizon. What happened because of this pandemic in America, it forced us to go digital. Every company has started a new strategy on how to get direct to their customers. We shot commercials, social media, everything we could to tell the Blue Land story, and wow, did it work. When we come out of this pandemic, that's not gonna change. We've accelerated the digitization of the American economy by five years. This is a whole new America. America, and it's a really good one. Keep selling direct and keep telling the story. Every piston is firing on this business. This is absolutely fantastic. Shark Tank and Kevin has enabled us to reach a nationwide audience, spread our message, and have such a positive impact on the environment. As a mom, I started Blue Land really for my son and for future generations. It's been so gratifying to see that people do really care and want to make a change in their lives and see a better future. In season 11, Brett Ellenson and David Sodeman made a deal with Barbara Corcoran for boho camper vans, designer vans that you can buy or rent. This looks like totally fun. We try to make it look like a tiny home. Let's see what they're up to now. Airing on Shark Tank right at the start of the pandemic was bittersweet. Right away, we had our two busiest months completely cancel on the rental side. We were losing thousands of dollars a day. We weren't sure where the business was gonna go. With our rentals just sitting in our garage, we saw an opportunity to help. We decided to donate our vans to first responders in Phoenix to just provide them a way to get away from the hospital and relax. As a stay-at-home order has started to lift, we saw a massive influx of renters coming back. Boho vans are perfect for a pandemic because they're self-quarantined by design. It's a really great way to travel right now. One of the biggest issues for our business has been finding a reliable source for cargo vans. We've now partnered with a local dealership for our clients to purchase a van and turn it into a boho masterpiece. 
In the year before Shark Tank, we had done 493,000 in sales. In the eight months since Shark Tank, we've done $1.4 million in sales, and we have another $1 million of pre-orders on the way. You've doubled your number of employees, and you've tripled your production. It gives me every reason to believe that the sky's the limit. Recreational vans of your own that you can put your family in and travel safely anywhere you want in America is not just a trend, but it's the way of the future. Today, customers are putting health, safety, and value first. So no matter what business you're in, you've got to pivot your operation to make sure you're meeting their desires. You're one of the entrepreneurs when I go to bed at night, I don't worry about. We started Boho Camper Vans because it's something we truly enjoy. We like to camp, we like the outdoors. It started from a passion. Boho isn't just a business anymore. It's a way for people to get outside, spend time with their families, spend time with their friends. It feels good to be able to provide that to people. In season 11, Joe Altieri made a deal with Lori Grenier for his innovative window screen, Flex Screen. The world's first and only flexible window screen. Let's see what he's up to now. The year before pitching to the Sharks, we did $5.1 million in sales. In the year since Shark Tank, we have tripled sales to over $15 million. Because of COVID, we've noticed an increase because people want to open their windows more and let fresh air into their homes. To support that growth, all four of our U.S. manufacturing plants have been running at full capacity. And we opened our first international plant in Canada so that we can bring FlexScreen to our neighbors up north. Joe, you know, with this partnership, we're going to take your product to the masses. We just closed a major deal with Sankoban, the largest window and screen manufacturer in the world. We're going to bring it to Home Depot, Walmart, Menards, Amazon. You're going to have a huge presence on each of these guys. What this will mean for FlexScreen is that they're going to be in every major retailer, not only nationwide, but internationally as well. When homeowners see FlexScreen, they say, I want it. This is so much better. I gotta have that one. So the question that we get asked is why flex screen? And I'm sure that's what you wanna know as well. When a better mousetrap comes along, it takes the industry by storm. Our goal with flex screen is to replace the window screen industry completely. One of the things that I am most proud of is all of the jobs that we've been able to create, all of the families that are now supporting themselves because of flex screen. To invent something in your garage that gets the type of attention that Shark Tank brings is so humbling. And now to see that American dream come to fruition is absolutely amazing. In season 11, Cassidy Crowley made a deal with Lori Grenier for her hybrid teether and baby spoon, the Baby Tune. This is a great product. Let's see what she's up to now. Right after we aired on Shark Tank, our sales grew overnight. Just within the first month, we had over $100,000 in sales. We like that. A few months after I made the deal with Cassidy, I went to Hawaii and we decided that Munchkin was gonna be our goal. Munchkin is one of the world leaders in baby and children products. They were her dream, and they've been a dream to work with as well. To work with you and my favorite shark, Lori, was a dream come true, and we are now proud to tell you we'll be in over 5,000 doors. So exciting. Munchkin is now handling product development, distribution, manufacturing, and so much more. I can still design new products, and I'm on the back of every baby teen soul. Oh my gosh, look. The Baby Tune is now in Target, Walmart, and also in online stores like Amazon and the Munchkin website. For every Baby Tune sold, we donate to the International Fund of Animal Welfare. Some of our sales will go to protect animals and their habitats. I think Cassidy is going to set the world on fire. I think she'll do great things for humanity and not only for herself, but for others. Now I have more time to do stuff that I enjoy doing, like going surfing and dancing hula, and it also allows me to come up with new ideas in the future. This experience has taught me that anyone in the world has the opportunity to create their own business. Just getting to experience all this, it's just a dream come true.
fact, in season 11, Joe DeMinn and Rachel Connors made a deal with Daniel Lubitsky for their hammocks with a social mission, Yellow Leaf Hammocks. Just because I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's check in with them now. We started Yellow Leaf Hammocks to provide a path out of poverty for artists and moms in rural Thailand. The year before Shark Tank, we had just launched a partnership with Virgin Voyages, as well as our new line of relaxation furniture called the Hammock Throne. Then, the COVID pandemic hit. Our wholesale business dried up in a matter of days. Vendors canceled orders, and some even refused to send payment. We decided to flip our business completely around and invested everything into redoing our entire e-commerce experience and going direct to our customers. The weekend after airing on Shark Tank, we did $250,000 in sales. Now, four months later, we've done 1.5 million in sales. And the new customers who found us after Shark Tank helped create 200,000 hours of employment for our weavers in Thailand. It's incredible what you guys accomplished, and thanks to the power of Shark Tank also. I chose to invest in Yellow Leaf for several reasons. One is that Joe and Rachel were very authentic and real, and you could sense their goodness. They have a deep social mission to help. But also, as a guy that was born in Mexico, I love hammocks, and I've always thought that they have not received their due in American society. And together with Joe and Rachel, I'm committed to help change them. Since Shark Tank, you have gone five-fold in the number of people whose livelihoods you're able to provide for. It's incredible. It's really a testament to your vision and your ability to change other people's lives. The power that a job has to transform a family is incredible. In less than a generation, they can go from the bottom of the economic pyramid to opportunities that were completely unthinkable before. I just feel really excited for the future. I feel sure that we can accomplish really big goals that we set out to achieve with support from Daniel and the Shark Tank community and our customers all over the world. You know, John Rachel started with a dream to encourage all of us to find a way to find relaxation. The stressful times that we're all living through just accentuates our mission. And in the years to come, we're going to see a lot of great things from them. In 11, farm owner Katie Jo Evans made a deal with Lori Grenier for the Frozen Farmer, ice creams and sorbets made with imperfect produce. I will give you the money if we can land a major national chain. Let's see what she's doing now. Airing in March of 2020 during the height of the pandemic put us in a really tough spot. We had built an incredible amount of inventory up, anticipating increased sales, but we couldn't get the product from our warehouse to the grocery store. So we launched online sales of our ice cream and shipped directly to our customers' doorsteps. We pivoted our farm creamery to help our community and supplied everyday essential goods out of our drive through window. And we donated pints to local hospital workers, police stations, and fire departments to thank them for their service. What happened next was incredible. A Walmart buyer was interested in the product line. I was able to close the deal with more than 4,300 Walmart locations nationwide. When I pitched on Shark Tank, I brought with me our nice cream. We've since changed the name to Frobert. It's a blend of our traditional ice cream and sorbet, reducing the fat and calorie content without sacrificing flavor or creaminess. Frobert is entirely new to the category. There's nothing on the shelf like it. Now we're in more than 8,000 stores, including Giant Food, Stop and Shop, and every Kroger location nationwide. The year I pitched to the Sharks, my business had done $310,000 in sales. Now, just nine months since Shark Tank, I'm nearing $1 million in sales with $15 million in committed purchase orders. In the Shark Tank, I gave you a challenge, and you not only got into one major retailer nationwide, you got into four. I love Frozen Farmer's Mission. I love that they used unloved fruit that's delicious, just not as pretty. And I love that Katie Jo is probably one of the hardest working, most results-oriented entrepreneurs I've ever had. I'm super proud of you, and I'm just super excited for our future. There's been so many times that we could have given up, and quite honestly, so many times that maybe we even wanted to. But we knew in our hearts that the Frozen Farmer was a continuation of our family's legacy, and the mission of reducing food waste is so important to us. We're creating a better world one pint at a time, and that's something for us that makes the Frozen Farmer so much sweeter. In 11, Mike Grice and Rob Nooner made a deal with Kevin O'Leary for their portable oxygen canisters, Boost Oxygen. We'll take the deal. <laughs> Let's see what they're up to now. 
Boost Oxygen provides nearly five times the concentration of oxygen than the air that we're normally breathing. Whether you're a senior citizen, whether you're exercising, whether you're an athlete, we can all benefit from the use of supplemental oxygen. The year that we pitched the Sharks, we did $6.4 million in sales. It's been less than a year and a half since we aired, and we've done over $15 million in sales. We've doubled from 4,000 to over 8,000 locations where Boost Oxygen is available. Big Five Sporting Goods, Dick Sporting Goods, Kroger Grocery Stores, Walgreens, all the way down to those individual mom and pop retailers who recognize the value of our brand that they can bring to their local consumers. I used to drink coffee in the afternoons. Now in the afternoon, I boost. Boost Auction is one of those deals that you say to yourself, why didn't I think of that? People have learned about it all across America. The brand is becoming one of the best out there in terms of helping athletes, helping hikers, helping people that work out. I see this company being huge in two years. Look, we should all take a moment and smell the roses, or better still, take a boost. <laughs> Boost Oxygen was started 14 years ago in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And when the pandemic hit, Bridgeport being an inner city, closed their schools, and a lot of the school-aged children lost their access to proper nutrition during the day. We wanted to help, so we donated the Connecticut Food Bank of Bridgeport to help provide meals to the needy. It's really inspirational to be able to reach people with a product that didn't exist 14 years ago, and the millions of people that now know about it and rely on it on a daily basis. We're on the leading edge of bringing an entirely new idea forward, and we're helping millions of people as we do so.